Good afternoon, everybody, and happy Friday to you. I'm going to welcome here to the podium uh, William Brownfield, who I think you know is our Assistant Secretary of State for the Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs. In that role since 2011, he oversees a bureau responsible for leading programs that combat illicit drugs and organized crime and support law enforcement and the rule of law. As you know, yesterday the Assistant Secretary appeared before the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations where he addressed the threat of transnational criminal organizations. Today, however, uh, he's going to focus uh, more specifically uh, on INL support in Central America. So I'm going to bring him up here. He'll have a few comments at the top, and then we'll get to some Q&A. As we've done before, I'm going to stand off to the side here, and I'll moderate the Q&A, uh, and, uh, and then when that's complete, uh, we'll get right into the regular uh, daily briefing for the day. So with that, this is Secretary Brown. Thank you, Hefe, because this is, after all, a Central America briefing. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Bill Brownfield. I am the Assistant Secretary for Drugs and Law Enforcement. I oppose the first. I support the second. My real function today, as you can all imagine, is somehow to keep you entertained for a couple of minutes while you are stuck in this windowless room, while conceivably the finest afternoon that Washington will see this entire summer is occurring outside without our participation. We are at about the six month mark from when the United States Congress approved the appropriation of an unprecedented roughly $750 million to support United States government efforts in Central America. So it is not a bad time for us to take a look at what is happening there right now. That amount which comes to me is about a third of that $750 million for security and law enforcement. That is one part of what the United States government writ large is trying to do with its three-part strategy in Central America. Prosperity, which speaks for itself, economic development, trade. Governance, which is to make the institutions of government work in a way that delivers value for the people of Central America and security, by which we mean managing, reducing, and ideally eliminating violence and violent crime, which produces some of the push factor driving tens of thousands of citizens of Central America uh, to seek residence in other countries, including the United States of America. Our piece of this program is what we call the three-part, I'm into threes today, three-part strategy, bottom-up, by which we are trying to support programs at community level that have an impact on people who live in the communities, walk on the streets, and work in those countries. Top down, by which we mean reform of institutions, training and creating better performing law enforcement, prosecutorial skills, courts and corrections, and finally, support for operations, those units, those organizations that are in fact providing on a day-by-day -day basis the actual enforcement of the laws, management, control, and protection of the borders, control of seaports and airports throughout Central America. We've had some cool results in the course of the last 12 months. We are working in an unprecedented way with USAID on what we call the place-based strategy, not a new strategy. It was first developed in a city called Los Angeles in the southern part of California, and cities like Juarez, Mexico, and Medellin, Colombia have pursued it as well successfully by which we identify precisely certain zones in cities or even in rural areas and then provide a specifically targeted developmental and security approach to that zone. We have made some pretty cool progress in terms of efforts to control gangs, both law enforcement efforts and efforts to provide alternatives to the particularly vulnerable youth in poor neighborhoods that are otherwise very susceptible to gang recruitment. 
You have seen in, in at least one country, Guatemala, how an anti-corruption effort can truly succeed. The organization is called CICIG. We have been supporting it now for seven years. And for those of you who missed this story, at the end of last year, with CICIG's investigations, virtually the entire previous government of Guatemala was removed due to allegations, not yet prosecuted, but allegations of corruption. And finally, there are an un impossible to name in their entirety number of special law enforcement units and task forces that provide uh, enforcement on issues such as major crimes or, 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 or special victims uh, or border-related issues or counter-narcotics or gang units. In other words, we have not been sitting on our hands over the last six months since the congressional appropriation or the last seven years since the Carsey effort started here in the United States of America. Where we have engaged with the place-based strategy, homicides are down. The entire government of Guatemala has been replaced. In Honduras, big chunks of the Honduran National Police have been purged because <laughs> of allegations of corruption. There are more than 50 locations in Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador where there are now model police precincts which will become the core for a place-based strategy and more than 60,000 Guatemalan, Honduran, and Salvadoran youth have gone through what we call the Gang Resistance Education and Training Program or GREAT to give them some protection from recruitment by the gangs. That, ladies and gentlemen, is my summary of where we are. And now I invite you to go on the attack. <laughs> I just can't top that. <laughs> Pam.